Hey everyone, today we're going to look at how to set up Pi-hole on Open Media Vault. So while Open Media Vault is mostly used as a NAS where you can share folders, there's many different things that you can do with it. And what we're going to look at today is how you can install Pi-hole, which is a DNS ad blocker in Docker. So we're actually going to go through and install Docker and Portainer first, and from there we're then going to configure Pi-hole. So if you haven't installed Open Media Vault yet, I have a video that I released last week uh, and I'll leave a pop-up for that right now. And I also have written instructions for everything that we're going to be doing today in the description of the video. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to log into Open Media Vault and we're going to select OMV Extras on the left-hand side. Now, if you don't have the Open Media Vault Extras, you need to install it from the plugin section. Generally, if you're using this, at least on a Raspberry Pi, uh, it will come installed by default. But I just want to make that note in case you're using this on a different platform. After that's done, you're going to select the Docker tab, and then you're going to click the Docker drop-down menu, and you're going to click Install. This is going to run through and fully install Docker. Once Docker is installed, we're now going to install Portainer, and Portainer is going to be used for us to manage all of our Docker containers from our uh, Open Media Vault instance. So think of Portainer as a Docker management console. So you'll still use Open Media Vault to manage uh, all of your shares and pretty much everything else. But if you have to modify any of your Docker containers, you're going to do that through Portainer. So once Portainer is installed, you have to reboot your Raspberry Pi. And as soon as it comes back up and you log back into Open Media Vault, you can go back and you can launch Portainer at that time. You're then going to have to set up a username and password. At the next screen, select Docker because we're only going to be managing the local Docker environment. And then at the next screen, select local. And at this point, you're ready to manage your containers. So we now have Docker and Portainer fully configured. What we're going to do is we're going to take a step back and we're going to create our Mac VLAN network interface that is going to be installed on top of Docker. So that's the reason why we had to install Docker first. If you try and do this before Docker is installed, it's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. If you didn't set up Open Media Vault using SSH, what you can do is you can just hook up your Raspberry Pi to a monitor and keyboard because we have to run a few different commands. So as soon as you're connected to that Raspberry Pi, you're going to run the ifconfig command. You're then going to be brought to a bunch of different network interfaces. These are all the network interfaces that exist on this Raspberry Pi. So you need to find your Raspberry Pi's IP address. For me, it's 192.168.1.197. So I see that here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the uh, adapter's name. So for whatever reason, it's ENXB, etc. Uh, what I need to do is I need to copy that entire string so that I can enter it into my next command. So the next command is going to go through and it's going to create a Mac VLAN network interface. So you have to run this command and you have to substitute a few things. Make sure you use the correct adapter name above. Uh, so basically replace my ENXB with whatever your adapter name is. And then you're going to have to set up your subnet, gateway, and IP range to match the local subnet that you're using. So for me, I'm using 192.168.1.etc. For you, it might be 192.168.0, it could be 10. etc. There's various different ways you could do it, but you have to ensure that you're using the correct subnet here. And the last thing is that IP range. Whatever you put at the end there, so mine's 192.168.1.195, that will be the IP address that you're going to use to connect to Pi-hole. So when you run that command, it's going to create a Mac VLAN network interface. Now it's important to know why we're doing this. Now a Mac VLAN network interface allows you to pretty much create a virtual network interface. And what that allows you to do is have your own port configuration. So for example, if you're using port 80 for your Open Media Vault web admin page, it's using port 80. If you try and use port 80 for Pi-hole as well, you're gonna run into a port conflict. So since Open Media Vault has its own ports that it's using, what we're doing is we're separating Pi-hole out so that it has its own port configuration and we don't have to worry about any port conflicts. That is the benefit of using a Mac VLAN network interface. So now that the network interface is set up, we're going to go back to Portainer and we're going to select volumes and we're going to add two different volumes. We're going to add one with the name etc-pihole and one with the name etc-dnsmask.d. These are where your Pi-Hole's configuration files will be stored. So that's the reason why we're creating this. 
Once that's done, select containers on the left hand side and then you're going to add a new container. Give it a name and then in the uh, docker.io field you're going to put pihole slash pihole colon latest. This is going to pull the latest pihole image when you install it. We're then going to add five different network ports. We're going to use 53, 67, 80, 443, and 53 again. So the first two, 53 and 67, make sure you set those as UDP. The rest of them will be TCP, but TCP is used by default. So just make sure you change those first two to be UDP. We're then going to go down to the bottom and we're going to select volumes and we're going to map two additional volumes. For the first one, type in slash etc slash pihole and then you're going to select the pihole uh, volume that we created earlier. And for the second one, you're going to do slash etc slash DNS mask dot D and you're going to select the DNS mask volume that we created earlier. As soon as that's done, you can head over to the network section and you're going to uh, select the PH underscore network. That's the Mac VLAN network that we created earlier. You can then go over to the environment section and we're going to add two environment variables. The first is going to be the web password and the second is going to be the server IP. So the web password, whatever you put as the value there, that's what you're going to use to log in to the Pi-hole web page that we're going to get to in a little bit. Uh, the server IP, that's the IP address of that Mac VLAN network interface that we created earlier. For me, it's 192.168.1.195, but if you are using a different IP address, you'll have to put that there. You can now go over to the restart policy and you're going to change that to always. This just says that if Pi-hole stops, it should automatically restart or if you restart your Open Media Vault server, it will automatically start Pi-hole as soon as it starts back up. The final thing that we're going to do is we're going to select Capabilities and we're going to turn on Net Admin. Once that's done, the entire container is configured. So you can click Deploy the Container and what it's going to do is it's going to go and it's going to pull down that Pi-hole image, the latest Pi-hole image, and it's going to set up a new Docker container using all of the variables and everything that you just configured in Portainer. So once that container is running, you'll be able to access it by navigating to the server IP address you configured in the environment variables or the IP address of that Mac VLAN network interface. So remember, those should both be the same. When you are brought to the Pi-hole admin page, what you can do is you can log in with that web password environment variable that you created earlier. So for me, I just left it as password, but you probably went ahead and changed that. So that's what I'm going to log in with. So at this time, Pi-hole is fully configured, and what you can do is you can go and you know subscribe to as many different uh, blocking lists that you want, change any of these Pi-hole settings, it's up to you. The last thing that we're going to talk about, and I'm not going to demo because there's various different ways to do it, is the DNS configuration. So on the written instructions, I have a few different ways that you can configure your DNS server, meaning that you can do it on the, uh, the client device itself, or you can do it on the router. My preferred uh, method of doing this is on the router so that all of my devices that are connected to my router will automatically use this Pi-hole server as their DNS server. If you do it on the client device itself, you have to manage the DNS server on every single one of these devices. So kind of be conscious of that depending on how you want to do this. If you only want certain devices to use Pi-hole as the DNS server, then you know setting them up individually is fine. But if you want to go through and you want to set up all of your devices on your local network to use Pi-hole as its DNS server, you should go into your router's configuration and change the DNS servers there. So this is a perfect time to bring up that while we just created uh, Pi-hole as a DNS server, it's very, very important to ensure that you have redundant DNS servers. So whenever you log into your router's page, you're most likely going to see that there are two lines. There's a primary DNS and a secondary DNS. The reason for that is because if the primary is down, the secondary will be used. So if you only have one, meaning the primary is this Open Media Vault slash Pi-hole server that you set up, if you're only using this one and that goes down, you reboot it or whatever, you're not going to be able to resolve domain names. That's the reason why having a secondary is very important. So the best thing to do is buy a very cheap Raspberry Pi 0W. They're like 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something like that. I'll leave a, uh, a link in the description for that. Uh, but buy one of those and you can configure Pi-hole on that as well. So I created a video on how you could do that. I'll leave a pop-up for that now. But what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to have redundant DNS servers. There's also various 
uh, different devices you can configure Pi Hole on. You can set it up on a Synology NAS if you happen to have one of those. You can set it up pretty much anywhere that Docker is running. So I don't want to give the impression that you have to do this on a Raspberry Pi. You can do this on you know various different devices. The main point that you have to take away here is that having a secondary DNS server is very important. So make sure that you go ahead and do that. That's how you configure Pi Hole though. I'm hoping that all these instructions made sense. Um, obviously, any questions that you have, please leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.